Um, we have our last uh, uh, team here, our AI and the space sciences team. Um, can I invite you guys to come up? This is um, this team has been uh, looking at um, the general application of artificial intelligence um, to the space sciences. Um, this presentation they're going to do is a little bit shorter than the, the, the other presentations, uh, and what it is is a little bit of an appetizer uh, for the panel discussion. So if I can invite you guys to take it away, and then we'll um, uh, change gears, and I'll, um, I'll let Jonathan take over. Thanks, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Morgan Henderson, and together with my colleagues Jack Collison and Justin Havlovitz in the audience there, we are the AI and Space Sciences team. I would like for you to imagine for a moment that you are in a dome on the surface of Mars, when suddenly you hear a hissing noise coming from the wall to your left. You don't know what it is, and this is kind of a scary situation, right? And what do you do? in situations like this? Well, on Earth, you might ask Siri, what is this hissing noise, and how can I fix it? So wouldn't it be nice if you could have access to something like Siri on the surface of Mars? Now let's imagine something that is maybe a little bit more relatable for those of you in the audience today. Imagine that you would never again have to conduct a literature review for the rest of your life. Now I have your attention. I <laughs> Some of the scientists in the audience may even have goosebumps. <laughs> You've heard a lot of talks today about how AI and machine learning are being used at the FDL program to augment space science research. But there are other ways that AI can be and has been used that should also pique the interest of NASA and other leaders in space science research and the space industry. Our team has spent the last eight weeks investigating the current state of artificial intelligence as a field and rooting out some of the more compelling potential applications in the work being done at NASA and other leading institutions. Now, it may not surprise you to hear that NASA has already been applying AI techniques to various problems for decades. As you can see in this map provided to our team by MISO, one of the FDL program's industry partners, uh, research into several subjects in AI has been conducted at research centers across the country, most notably in Houston, Texas at NASA Johnson, but also in Southern California at NASA JPL, right down the road at Ames, and over on the East Coast at NASA Goddard and NASA headquarters. You can also see that this research has involved either through co-authorships or citations, the research done at various institutions and universities. And if you look very closely, you can actually see a nice little yellow blip sort of covering my own alma mater in Western Montana. <laughs> However, a literature review conducted by MISO using their own artificial intelligence system suggests that much of the research that is done by NASA, especially in the field of AI, is conducted discreetly at distinct research centers without fully taking advantage of the potential for coordination between research centers and with a larger number of outside partners from industry and academia. Now this provides a very unique opportunity for both NASA and these potential outside partners to come together and to accelerate the rate at which scientific progress is achieved, to illuminate the nature and magnitude of this unique opportunity, we would like to address for you here today two primary questions. The first of which being why. Uh, more specifically, why now and why AI? Uh, so we've addressed four different sectors uh, to try to answer this question. The first of which being new technology. With the rise of GPU computing, not only are we able to better visualize, uh, better visualize our data and our results of our analysis, but we're also able to better run programs that are based on artificial intelligence. Uh, along with this, cloud-based uh, storage solutions are becoming more prevalent, uh, which are very useful for AI because it requires a lot of data, as you probably noted from the previous presentations. Let's see. Next, we have a maturing field in AI. Uh, much research is being done, not only in academia, but also in industry. Companies like Google and Facebook and even Apple now are producing scientific papers uh, that are not only standalone, but sometimes in scientific journals. Uh, these, these papers are, or this research is helping not only develop new methods, 
in artificial intelligence, but also perfect uh, older methods as well as helping us understand them better. However, these methods aren't only being made for those who are experts in the field. They're also being made available to those who are not, a, not as experienced in computer science, statistics, or mathematics. Uh, tools such as Keras and Tensor, Google's TensorFlow are being made available as frameworks so users can simply call a method from these frameworks and they can build these artificial intelligence programs. Uh, along with this, uh, IBM and Intel are creating products such as DSX and Nirvana for cloud-based storage, as well as an interface through which users can better design their artificial intelligence programs, uh, which is not only making it more accessible, but also creating better results as they have access to larger amounts of storage. And last but certain, certainly not least is big data. Uh, although it is not a new thing, and we've had it for decades now, uh, it's coming in at an ever-increasing rate and in larger quantities than we've ever seen. Uh, humans aren't great at dealing with all of this data <coughs> as we have limited time and uh, we're not great at sifting through millions of, say, images. Uh, however, artificial intelligence lends itself rather nicely to solving this big data problem as it's, it's able to find patterns uh, and sift through all of this noisy data. Uh, one example of noisy data is, uh, well, solar images. We have 30 years of images taken at minute intervals, and you can all do the math, that's a lot of data. Um, so artificial intelligence is essential for sifting through all of this. The second question that we hope to address is how? Uh, how, are, how can we use artificial intelligence to our benefit? Uh, and we've delimited three different areas, the first of which being research and analysis. Uh, I mentioned before that we have big data, but it's also very complex. We have sensors not only on spacecraft, but also on the ground. Uh, we have data ranging from time series to to um, geomagnetic information to anything. You name it, it's probably in some form of data. Uh, artificial intelligence can help us sift through this complex data, even if it's really noisy. And we can discover patterns, anomalies, and we can conduct various forms of data and statistical analysis. Uh, not only this, but we're able to model data and uh, maybe even predict sometimes. Uh, as was shown in previous groups' presentations. One example is the 3D radar shape modeling team. Uh, they were able to help expedite the process of shape modeling, which is really important, and it helps us discern more information from these, this complex data in delay Doppler, Doppler information. Next, we have project management. Uh, although it's not nearly as exciting as 3D radar shape modeling, it is uh, a really high reward area uh, and doesn't have much, much um, application as of now. Uh, we're able to conduct network analysis, document review, and even literature searches uh, and reviews, as Morgan mentioned earlier. Um, so we're able to discover connections between documents. We're able to follow these trails of documents uh, which is particularly applicable with uh, project management as they often result in these messy trails of data and documents. Uh, with the help of our friends at MISA, uh, we have a wonderful graphic here uh, showing connections between uh, NASA documents that involve artificial intelligence research, uh, not only authored and co-authored by NASA, uh, but also that are papers that are cited by NASA, uh, which is a really interesting facet to look at. Uh, we can see that there are various clusters in this graphic. So we have uh, spatial temporal data mining, we have statistical learning, Bayesian networks, quantum optimizations. Uh, so the AI that was used in this literature review was able to categorize everything and cluster it, which is interesting and 
Uh, we're also able to see the connections between these documents, and by looking at this, we can reduce redundancy and reduce time waste as well as uh, wasting money, which is important when running on a limited budget. <clears throat> this brings us to perhaps our most obvious and certainly the most visible of areas for potential applications of AI in space science research, uh, space missions. We have already seen that autonomous operations can allow robotic agents to conduct the science that they do more efficiently. Beginning in May of last year, the Mars Curiosity rover began to use its chemistry and camera or ChemCam instrument autonomously during certain periods of time. This instrument is composed of a laser that vaporizes material at the Martian surface and a camera whose images are used to determine the chemical composition of the vaporized material. The automation of the targeting of this instrument and the analysis of its data led to a 53% increase in the successful targeting of rocky outcroppings, the primary geological target of the rover. Furthermore, it led to a 10% increase in the overall number of scientific observations made by the rover. This kind of efficiency and freedom from human intervention will be invaluable in future projects moving forward and will be absolutely necessary for projects as we move farther and farther from the Earth. After all, a submersible navigating the liquid hydrocarbon oceans on Titan will not have the luxury of waiting hours for advice from a ground crew on Earth should, say, an iceberg broken off from the uh, water ice terrain of Titan drift into its path. Similarly, human uh, uh, manned missions to space cannot remain limited by the realities of electromagnetic communication. If we wish to go farther and conduct our operations safely in environments that are inherently deadly to human beings, and to do so efficiently, we will need a new source of this mission support. An on-site expert system is, uh, would conceivably be able to fill this role quite nicely. Uh, this is a type of AI system that has actually already been successfully implemented in uh, biomedical applications for decision support and uh, decision making uh, with a good amount of success. And for crews that uh, intend to stay in space or on another body, uh, it would be extremely beneficial to live in a shelter that is capable of monitoring its own environment and reacting to changes therein. Intelligent buildings on Earth are already acquiring and analyzing large amounts of local environment data in order to make more efficient the process of energy consumption and resource allocation. So not only could this technology be used to keep human beings in space and on uh, other planets safer, it could also make future missions uh, more efficient and more cost effective. Now I know I said earlier that we would be addressing two primary points today, uh, two primary questions, but hopefully you have another one somewhere in the back of your minds, which is what happens next? How will NASA choose to move forward with artificial intelligence? And I can't fully answer this question for you today. I can't guarantee that NASA will decide to increase its investment in this field. But if you'll indulge me for a moment, I would like to share with you our team's vision for the future of AI at NASA. I would like to think that somebody will end up reading the paper that has resulted from our team's research and that it will get them thinking. I would like to think that they will see this low-hanging fruit and decide to take advantage of this critical moment in time when efforts in both industry and academia have come together to create an environment that is so ripe for application. Who knows what kind of information is lying in wait in vast troves of data, just waiting to be found by a machine learning algorithm? Who could say what would be done in the hours of time given back to the professionals who manage projects when their time is no longer unnecessarily wasted on menial tasks like literature reviews? <laughs> And what will we find as we continue to use autonomous agents to circumvent the issues of communication and mission support as we move ever farther in our venture away from home? What we would really like to see is people doing more, going farther, and staying there because they finally have the tools that they need to help propel us into the next age of scientific discovery and exploration. And if any of you have your own visions for how AI could be transforming the space sciences, we would really like to hear about them. Thank you.